Hi there, my name is Chris. I run our customer success team here at OnStack, and I'll be showing you around the OnStack page editor. But before we begin, I want to talk about what the OnStack page editor is and how we run off of it. The OnStack page editor is a section-based editor. So all the customizations we'll be making happen within a section as a page is built up of multiple different sections. First, we'll begin with talking about the main toolbar. Toolbars are how we customize things here in the OnStack page editor. So we'll talk about the multiple toolbars that exist within this specific editor. First, we'll go over the main section-based toolbar. The section-based toolbar is the one that appears above a section when it's outlined in our blue border. This indicates that that section is currently selected and being edited. We'll walk through the different tabs of this toolbar. The first tab on this toolbar being the Layouts tab. This tab controls the appearance of the section, can completely change how a section looks. For example, for the media section, we can change it from media left, media right, media centered, and media full. This allows for endless customizations within the editor. Not only do you have the ability to choose between different section types, but you can also choose between different section types and layouts. Next, we have the header. Let's first talk about how to tell when something is toggled on or off. When it's off, it is a white color. When it's on, it's blue. So for this H icon that is the next tab, once it's blue, the header is currently toggled on. A header is the ability to add rich text, a form, a primary button, and more above any section. We added this so that you don't have to add a title section above a different section just to add text above it. You can always toggle the header on or off for any section. This is beneficial for adding additional content or pretext before any section. Next, we have our spacing tab. Spacing is the ability to add a margin to the left, right, top, or bottom of any section. This helps by making something more left-bound, right-bound, or adding space above or below it or the lack thereof. Next, we have our maximum width. Max width is the ability to set how wide a section can go at its maximum. This mostly applies to desktop as our sites are automatically mobile optimized. However, for desktop, it's preset at 1200. You can also set it to 600 to have it mobile ready always, or you can leave that input blank to have it go auto. Next, we have alignment. This is the ability to set a section to go left bound, center, or right bound. This is beneficial for just changing up the different ways that a section should go. Next, we have background image, or as we now call it, background media, due to the introduction of unstacked native video. Background media is the ability to set an image or video behind any of your sections. You can also set its alignment here, its, its layout style, it can be cover, contain, or grid. And you can also set its parallax speed or the lack thereof. Parallax is the ability to have it scroll at a different speed of the visitor scroll, therefore adding a little bit more of a dynamic feel to the page. Unstacked video can also be accessed here. To add a background media, simply click the image icon on the main toolbar. If it's already blue, what you'll notice is that a sub toolbar will appear. Here you can click swap or remove to change that media. Next, we have background color. Background color is really helpful because it can coexist with a background media. Background color is actually an overlay if a background media already exists. And you can control this by controlling the opacity of this color. Background color can be any of your brand colors or any hex or RGB color. Then you can simply use that opacity dial to put it at whatever opacity is fitting. Background colors are really beneficial if you have a darker background media and need for the text in the on the section to appear better. You can set a lighter background color or for the versa, you can set a darker background color at a lower opacity. Next, you have the ability to A-B test a section. A-B testing is the ability to set two variants against each other and have a conversion statistic. In this case, you can have it that the person viewed a page, submitted a form, or clicked a button within that section. There are multiple options with A-B testing, so feel free to explore our documentation on that. Next, we have the ability to set anchor links. Anchor links are beneficial for one-page websites or longer form pages where you want to link around to them. An anchor link is the ability to append a pound sign and then the anchor link's name to the end of a URL and have it jump to that specific section that has been set as that anchor link. Lastly, on this main toolbar, before we jump into the element-based toolbars, we have the ability to toggle between dark and tech, dark and light compensation. 
the black tea in front of a white background is when the elements and text within a section will compensate for a lighter background, whereas the white tea in front of a black background is when the elements and text within that section will compensate for a darker background. This is beneficial so that no matter what color your background is, the text and elements are always readable and easily viewable. They also have a good contrast between the background so that there is no struggle for the reader to see exactly what you're trying to say on the page. Next, we'll jump into the elements within a section. For this example, we'll go over media, since media is a section that has the most different toolbars. So, going over this will get you ready for any other section. First, we'll talk about media within a media section. Pretty meta, but we'll go over it. First, we're going to talk about how to change or set this image. Although there is a background image button within the toolbar, the way to actually change the media for this media section is to simply click the box. Clicking the box will launch the media modal, where you can select either the image, embedded video, or native unstacked video you'd like to use. Next is how to set the animation for media. You can set this utilizing the animation tab within the element-based toolbar. This will allow you to have it swing in from the right, left, top, bottom, or zoom in. Then you have the ability to set a box shadow. A box shadow is a slight tint around the media. This allows for making the media more apparent within the page. Last, we have border radius for media. Border radius is the ability to round the corners of any media. This could be an embedded video, native unstacked video, or an image. The higher the border radius, the more rounded the corners are. And as our last stop within the media section, we'll talk about the text element. The text element mostly has the text editor, which can be activated by highlighting any text that you'd like to edit. Within this text toolbar, you can toggle between H1, H2, H3, bold, italics, and beyond. You can also hyperlink text or put it in a checklist format or ordered list or numerical list. This is beneficial for completely styling how your text on your page looks. Lastly, below that text section, we have our action buttons. Action buttons via the lightning icon is the ability to set a primary button, secondary button, text link, or add a form. Now let's talk about unstacked forms. Unstacked forms are more powerful than they appear to the naked eye. Having an integration setup supercharges your unstacked form. By default, an unstacked form simply goes directly into your unstacked CRM. And you can set the on submit to have it either show a message, redirect to a new page. You can also add custom inputs, change the name of this form so that it can be reused on different pages, and change the submit button. But it gets even more powerful once you connect, connect integrations like Klaviyo, MailChimp, HubSpot, and Active Campaign, or more coming soon. This allows you to push the data that this form collects into other systems. If you want any help with that, feel free to reach out to help at unstack.com or check out the videos that we have on the integration connection page. Lastly, we'll sign off and tell you a little bit more about how to add more to this page. Adding more can simply be done by hovering the bottom of a section and clicking the Add Section button that appears there. You can scroll through the blank templates that we have for sections, or scroll to the very end to see all of the different templates that our designers have created for specific sections. This will help show you what the possibilities for a section are. Lastly, we'd love to invite you to join us for a demo webinar. Demo webinars are really beneficial for getting a full overview of the Unstack platform. They only take up 45 minutes, 30 minutes of which is dedicated to entirely showing you around the platform, and 15 for the remaining of that webinar is dedicated to a live Q&A where you can ask us anything. Thank you so much for following along, and best of luck with Unstack. If you need any help, help at unstack.com is an ungated support team. So no matter what plan you're currently on, feel free to reach out and we'll help you to the best of our ability. Bye for now.